Diablo 4's Season 5 is now live. It's been 24 hours since the release of Season 5. And I had uh, five or six hours of gameplay in this video. I'm going to share with you what I accomplished in those five or six hours and let you know what the good, the bad, the ugly is so far that I've experienced. Now, if you're looking for a video that's going to answer the question, should I play season five? This is not it. I have not completed all of the content in season five, so I would not even dare to contemplate that question, but you're more than welcome to stay and watch the video. And before we get into that, a lot of you continue to watch my content, but yet do not subscribe. If you can find it in your heart to hit that subscription button, I would really appreciate the support of my content. All right, everyone, here is what my day one was like. All right, everybody, so I chose, I did a pivot. I chose Chain Lightning, Sork, and actually I'm probably gonna make another change uh, I think I finished that at around level 51, 52 uh, this evening, and uh, we are still in world tier three. Now, I have finished the seasonal campaign, and actually this is me beating the last part of the campaign. It was a pretty long, drawn-out fight, I have to say. It was a lot of fun. I liked the good of this was the fact that it was long and it wasn't super tough, but it was not easy. Now, let me know if you beat the campaign and if you found it super easy. I found the difficulty level at the, like, perfect. It wasn't too hard and it wasn't too easy. It was a nice mix. You had to earn it and I really enjoyed it. And at the end, you end up fighting the fell council guys which was a really really good fight so that's that's the good um it was a nice way to cap off and feeding and finishing sorry the seasonal campaign so uh really good job by blizzard the other good thing that i want to mention about season five is the fact that it looks like most of the builds are going to be viable now again take this with a grain of salt when you go to like the build sites and the tier lists and everyone has their preference and and so you take it with a grain of salt however typically in diablo 4 there's always a couple of classes that are always in the s tier and not all the classes in diablo 4 I don't think I remember seeing all the classes in S tier when it comes to end game, pit push, and in this case now with season five, the infernal horde, the new end game mechanic. Very rarely in Diablo 4 do you see all the classes sitting on top of the S tier. And I'm happy to say when you go to, and I use Max Roll, it's a very reliable website. And again, take this information with a grain of salt, guys. When I go to the tier list, end game and pit push, you can see here all the classes are on the S tier list, meaning all these builds are viable to push the end game and do very well and excel at the end game. So I'm very happy to see the Rogue, the Sork, the Barb, the Necro, even the Druid. Look at the Landslide Druid showing an S-Class status. Hurrah, hurrah, Blizzard. Good job. Look, when you have a video game that has all the classes competing and being able to not only do the end game content, but excel at it, you know, you got nothing but to do to just put your hands together and applaud the developers and so, so far, initially, now this, as you can see, with the arrows up, meaning that they've all escalated, um, this is all going to change, but initially, it looks like all the classes are going to be viable and be able to clear the end game content, which is S-tier development. Good job, Blizzard. Okay, so that is the good. Now, 
some bad stuff. I personally am not a fan on where Blizzard is taking this game from a leveling perspective. And let me quantify that. It is clear to me every season, starting from season three, that this the developers have started making it quicker and easier to get to level 100. Now, I'm a proponent of that. The bar was way too far on the other side. If we everyone remembers when this game first launched, it literally took a year to get to level 100. And I think 85% of the population, the player base, didn't even finish the campaign, let alone get to 100. But fast forward to season five, where like 51, I'm in my 50s after four or five hours of gameplay. That is crazy fast. I personally think it's too fast. The, the speed runners of this game, the people that play this game 16, 17, 18 hours a day, they are going to be able to basically have a level 100 character every day, um, which to some that might be appealing, but to me personally, I think it's a little too fast. It has to be tempered down a bit. There's no way people should be hitting max level on the first day. That is crazy fast. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want it all the way on the other side where it literally took forever to get to 100. But I think it just, they need to stop making this game faster from a leveling perspective. So I don't think it's good design to make it this quick. So that's my thoughts on how fast we are getting XP. It's just, it's too quick. That's simple. I just think, you know, bring it down a notch. I don't know, 20, 25% where I think you should be leveling max character. I don't know, 10, 15 hours. Even that is insane. Um, but I just think it's too quick. So that's one thing that I don't like. The other thing that um, happened is a couple of things. Number one, the tempering manuals. Once you picked up your first one, all of them were available. Now, great news, but I think that's a glitch and I don't think they fixed it. And I haven't seen any comment on it, but uh, that was, I, I don't know what's going on. It, it obviously was an oversight from Blizzard's uh, standpoint. I don't think they did it on purpose, but the fact that all the tempering manuals were available once you went back into town and you picked up your first one, that's a little insane to me. The other thing is the battle pass. Because people are leveling up so quickly, people that executed and turned on their battle pass were able to get the smoldering ashes way quicker because they were able to rank up so quick in the battle pass and get to the point where they were able to get the smoldering ash reward and in essence go and get the buffs for more xp which made the leveling process even quicker now blizzard actually put this in the patch notes to say that they know this was happening and that they were going to fix it for season five well surprise surprise it was not fixed and for something that was highlighted and communicated in the patch notes for it not to be done again oversight were they too busy who knows but that is a stain on season five i'm sorry this game's already quick enough to get to level 100 and the fact that people are leveling up so quickly you put you utilize the battle pass and because you've leveled up so much you've gotten so much experience you're you're hitting all the battle pass points and you're getting to the smoldering ash reward way quicker which then in turn you're able to get the smoldering ash to give you more xp and it's just a vicious circle it should have been fixed i don't know why it wasn't fixed they said they were going to fix it and they did it so that's a stain on season five it shouldn't be like that it's already quick enough to level up as i said and that is the bad now the ugly the ugly is even with the new in-game mechanic, I found myself, again, this is very early, day one, but 
the fact that it's still the same grind in the leveling process vis-a-vis -vis nightmare dungeons and hell tides nightmare dungeons and hell tides i didn't find the rewards in these mini dungeons as valuable than hell tides and nightmare dungeons and as a matter of fact regarding nightmare dungeons i finished off the night in worlds tier three like I said, 51, you, typically I go into the second capstone at level 55. However, I'm contemplating hemming, hemming and hawing about whether or not to do it because apparently in the second capstone, once you complete it, the Nightmare Dungeon sig sigil that it drops is a world tier three sigil. It's not a world tier four. And typically, if you want to level up quick, once you go to world tier four, you are, you know, they recommend, the speedrunners do, recommend you start doing nightmare dungeons in world tier four. Well, depending on your RNG and depending on whether or not you have the materials, because you're not going to get a nightmare dungeon tier four sigil so you're going to have to craft one and if in order to craft one you need the dust and you may or may not have it so this dilemma i don't understand why it's in the game when we finish the capstone the second capstone why are we given a world tier three sigil nightmare the nightmare dungeon sigil now please correct me if i'm wrong everywhere i've looked everywhere i fact checked and I haven't gone back into my video logs to see what happened in prior seasons. So I may be completely off base here, guys. So if you want to interject and correct me or actually confirm and verify what I'm saying is true, I would love to hear it uh, because I would love to know going in because I'm, you know, on my next stream, I will be going into World Tier 4. I would love to know because the dilemma is if you go to World Tier 4, then you can't do the nightmare dungeon so that means you're going into the hell tides and really i want to maximize my time with leveling up as quickly as possible but that if that is true i don't understand to me it looks like again my initial thought it looks like a form of gatekeeping so i don't like that so that's my day one experience i had a lot of fun i hit i'm in the mid 50s we're going to be going to the second capstone and we're going to be going to world tier four. The Fell Council fight that is part of the seasonal campaign was a blast. I had a lot of fun. I hope that translates into the infernal hordes. Only time will tell. But so far, so good. It looks like a lot of people are having a lot of fun. Looks like all the different classes are working as intended and that's great because now people can choose what should i play so that is only going to build variety and and the gameplay circle is going to be a constant thing where you can change and do multiple characters so that can only lend itself to good things now as far as the durability of season five again too early to tell However, I suspect that it looks like initially, and I hope I'm wrong, that this is going to be a very quick season. A lot of people are going to get their fill, max out a character, and then they're going to wait for the expansion. Now, I hope I'm wrong because all these classes do work, so that might be appealing for some players who like to play multiple classes and level up multiple classes. But... I haven't done the Infernal Horde. I haven't done it a lot. So maybe that will be a game changer. Only time will tell. But if I'm being completely honest and transparent, this might be a quick season. Now, it already is going to be a quick season. It's only two months. It's a shortened season. So who knows? But time will tell. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. How did your day one go? Did you Were you even able to play? Uh, let me know what class you're playing, what build you're playing. What are your thoughts on season five? Good, bad, the ugly. I want to hear it all. Okay, everybody. Thank you for watching. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care.
The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.